Hello guys, this is Wits Lounge, learning made easy. And in today's video, we are going to be considering two forms of structural isomerism, which are positional isomerism and functional isomerism. Have in mind that an earlier study has been done to introduce the concept of isomerism, and this study is going to be found as a link in the description of this video. Remember, like and subscribe to get notified as the videos pop up. So, having described chain isomerism, we'll go into the next form of isomerism, which is positional isomerism. Now, in positional isomerism, positional isomerism is a form of isomerism in which the position of multiple bonds as well as functional group changes in the chain. Let's look at a compound, for instance. Let's say I have butene. Butene is going to be represented as C4. But means for the in there is trying to tell you that there's a double bond. Okay, so remember I told you guys that carbon forms four bonds. This is one, two. The remaining has to be for hydrogen. So which means we are going to have a hydrogen atom here and another hydrogen atom here. In this case is one, two, three. Remaining one hydrogen. Here you have one, two, so two hydrogens. Here we have one, so three. Remember, if you put it all together, the bonds around carbon has to be four. Now, when we want to exhibit positional isomerism, you would find out that to exhibit positional isomerism, you simply change the position of the multiple bond or functional group. The functional group in this case is the double bond. So let's change that. If we happen to change it, it's now going to be, let's move it to this second one and see what happens. It's going to be C. Okay, so you have this. You have this. And you have this. Okay. So if we look at this now, this is referred to as boot one in, while this is boot two in. We've actually had videos which describe how to name organic compounds, so please do well to look up those videos. Okay, so you will notice that they are both different compounds, however, they have the same molecular formula. Let's confirm that. This is four carbon atoms, C, four. And then how many hydrogen? You have two, three, six, two, eight. Okay, so H, eight. Then if you consider this, this is three plus three, six plus one plus one, eight. So you have C, four, H, eight. Both of them are different compounds. This is but one in, this is but two in. However, their molecular formulas are the same. Why? Simply because we change the position of the multiple bond in the chain. And if you do that, the form of isomerism that you exhibited is referred to as positional isomerism. So now, let's try moving the double bond to another position and see what happens. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. Now, it was here. We moved it to the second carbon. Now, let's move it to the third. If you have this, now, let's fill it up. This is going to be CH3. Remember I told you, once you count a bond, the remaining bonds there should be four so if you have one the remaining should be hydrogen so that's three here is two bonds attached to it so remaining is two car here you have one two three so that means one hydrogen here you have one two so which means two now if you consider this particular compound now this compound is not boot three in this is still boot one in so you have that why is this still boot one in because you count from the side closest to double bond this is what you're going to find in our videos of naming our kings so please go and look them up now with that said you find out that this is not going to be considered different from this so if you're asked how many positional isomers does boot in have you notice that it's just two boot one in and boot two in let's try for pentene and see what happens now in the case of pentene you are going to have one two three four five Remember, I was just talking about positional isomers, not necessarily the other forms of isomerism that can occur with butene. You know, butene has geometric isomerism, butene has chain isomerism, it also has positional isomerism, and so on and so forth. So, but we're not discussing specifically for this part. We discussed the number of the positional isomers that can be produced from butene, and we noticed that it's just two. So, let's find out the number of positional isomers that can be gotten from pentene. Now, uh, let's fill this up. This is going to be H2. This is going to be H2. This is H2, H2, and this is H3. So let's see what happens here. Now, if we decide to move this double bond to the second carbon, it's going to be C. Double bond is now here. Okay. And then if I fill it, H3, I just have one here, 
one here h2 and h3 so the name of this compound the first one is pent one in or just pentene oh no that's that's not all yeah pent one in or you just call it pentene while this one is pent two in Let's try moving this bond to the third carbon and see what happens. Uh, see if it's changing. So if we have one CH3, okay, C, 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 C. Let's move it here. Now, if you move it here, you will notice that this is still pent 2 in because we always count from the side closest to the double bond, which means that pentene also has two positional isomers, which is pent 1 in and pent 2 in. You can't have this is not pent 3 in because you are counting from this side. You get so look up our videos on naming organic compound to help you okay so having said that let's try finally for hexene if we have hexene it's going to be one two three four five six let's put a double bond here this is going to be h2 this is going to be h uh h2 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 h3 okay so with this said we have this as hex one in Yes, hex one in. Then, if we move this double bond to the second position, it's going to be CH three. Okay, let's put out the carbon atoms first. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. We we'll put it to the second one, uh, and then we'll have hex two in. You can fill out the hydrogens. This is H three. This is H two. This is H two. This is just H. This is just H. This is hex two in. And then we move it to the third one and see if it's going to give us something different. CH3, uh, C2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, if we move it to the third one, we are going to have, yes, this is hex 3 in. Because in this case, counting from here or from here, you still have 3 and 4 as they. So look up those videos on naming alkenes so that you'll be able to understand this more. So this is hex 3 in. And we have that. Hexene actually has three positional isomers. Now, we could try out for functional groups and leave double bonds or multiple bonds. Let's say you have uh, an alkanol, for instance. An alkanol is characterized by the functional group hydroxyl or hydroxyl functional group. So if I have something like this, H3, H and H3. Okay, good. So this is what we refer to as propan two all propan two all uh then if we look at it the other one let's change the position of the oh and put it in, at the terminal carbon you have c let's let's sorry so you're going to have ccc uh the oh is now here which means you're going to have hydrogen and hydrogen here you have h2 you have h3 this is propan one all Yes, this is propan 1 O. So you notice that if we count the number of carbon atoms, we have C3. How many hydrogen atoms do we have entirely? This is 3 plus 3 plus 2, which is 8. And we have 1 oxygen. Same thing here. We have C3. And the hydrogen is 3 plus 2. That's 3 plus 3 plus... Okay, that's H8. And then we have 1 oxygen. So you notice that propan 2 O, which is a different compound from propan 1 O, would have the same formula. Why? Because of positional isomerism. In positional isomerism, we simply change the position of the functional group or the multiple bond. I hope this is well understood. So we go to the next one. The next form of isomerism that we are going to be considering is the functional isomerism. Functional isomerism is a form of isomerism in which compounds with different functional groups possess the same molecular formula. And this actually is being exhibited majorly by three compounds or three groups of compounds. We have the relationship between um, an alkanol and an ether with corresponding carbon atoms. We have that between an alkanoic acid and an alkanoid, and that between an alkanol and an alkanal. Let's consider the first group of compounds which exhibit functional isomerism. They are alkanols and ethers with corresponding number of carbon atoms. Now, the general molecular formula of an alkanol is given as Cn, H2n, plus 1OH. This is for alkanol. While that of an ether is given us uh, CnH2n plus 2O. However, 
R kernels are represented as R attached to OH, while ethers are represented as R attached to O attached to R, which means that here you have an alkyl group, and in the case of ethers, the alkyl groups occur on both sides. This is alkyl and hydrogen, but here you have alkyl, alkyl. So let's see. Imagine, for instance, we are considering butanol, but one or let's use but one or which is the same thing as butanol. So that's going to be four carbon, four carbon atoms, C, 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 and then the alkanol. Let's put the hydroxyl group here which means that we're going to have hydrogen, hydrogen to make the bonds for. Here you have one, two, so remaining two more bonds. You have one, two, remaining two, so you fill them with hydrogen. You have one, remaining three, fill them with hydrogen. Okay, this is what we refer to as boot and all. Now, if we decide to draw an ether <coughs> with corresponding carbon atoms, it's either we use methoxypropane or ethoxy, we'll talk about that later, but let's just use ethoxyethane. Ethoxyethane. So ethoxyethane is CH3, CH2 attached to O, attached to CH2, attached to CH3. So you have four carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, uh, for the ether. So this is ethoxyethane. So if you look at this, you would find out that the number of carbon atoms in butanol would be equals how many? The number of carbon atoms in butanol, butanol has how many carbon atoms? Four. The number of hydrogen atoms in butanol is going to be equals, it should be nine. That's um, three plus two. Three plus two is five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry, ten. Ten. The number of oxygen is one. Here we have four carbon atoms, four carbon atoms, C4 and how many hydrogen atoms we have 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 which is still 10 and then how many oxygens just one so you notice that alkanols and ethers with the same number of carbon atoms are functional isomers okay so the next example with respect to functional isomerism is between the alkanoic acid and esters yes alkanoic acids that have the same number of carbon atoms which correspond with esters uh, referred to as functional isomers. So let's consider an alkanoic acid like um, ethanoic acid, which is CH3 COOH. This is ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid. Then we would have that in ethanoic acid, you have two carbon atoms and you have four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. Let's consider an ether with the same number of carbon atoms. An example of an ether with the same uh, number of carbon atoms is methyl methanoate. Methyl methanoate is represented by the chemical formula HCOOCH3. That is methyl methanoate. Um, how to name these compounds is actually found in another video. So do like and subscribe so that you get these things as they pop up. So this is methyl methanoate. Methyl methanoate. So you have methyl methanoate. Now, in methyl methanoate, you would have that it has how many carbon atoms? Two carbon atoms, four hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen. So you have that every alkanoic acid and ester with the same carbon atoms actually exhibit functional isomerism. So you have that in mind. That whenever you notice an ester and an alkanoic acid, that you notice that the number of carbon atoms are the same, or more, they are functional isomers. Okay, so that's the second example. Then finally, you have an alkanal and an alkanone. An alkanal is characterized by a terminal carbonyl group, while an alkanone is characterized by a non-terminal carbonyl group. So let's consider an alkanal. Propanal, for instance, has three carbon atoms. And because it's an alkanal, the carbonyl group has to occur at the end, terminally. Okay, so that is going to be fill three hydrogens, two, and uh, here one. Okay, then we check out a propanone. The propanone is going to be 1, 2, 3. But then the carbonyl is going to be non-terminal, which means you're going to have CH3 here. The bonds here is 4 already, so we can't um, include hydrogen. Then here we have CH3. Okay, so let's consider the name of this is going to be propanol. And this is propanone. So if you look at this particular concept now, you will notice that here, the propanol has 3 carbon atoms. And it has six hydrogen atoms, H6, and then it has just one oxygen. Same thing happens here. We have uh, for, for your propanone, 
you would have three carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and just one oxygen atoms, which means that these two exhibit isomerism. And the form of isomerism they exhibit is referred to as functional isomerism.